Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here and I am the Audiophiliac. Do you think a speaker designer or an amplifier designer or a digital converter designer, do, do audio designers have to know what good sound sounds like in order to be a great designer? Is it just a matter of knowing how to engineer something, how to design a circuit, how to design a circuit that measures better? Does that translate to making a great sounding product? Well, that's a question, isn't it? Because I've had designers tell me over the years of various products that they, they never really listen to them during the design process. They're sitting at their computer, they're figuring out things, they're thinking about it, and they, they don't really build prototypes and listen to them or even measure them in that thing. They, listening is not part of their agenda. And I've noted that people who are proud to tell me that they don't really listen to their products in the design phase um, rarely make great sounding products because I don't think they, they know what they're looking for. They don't know what they're chasing after. They just seem to be chasing after something that measures better, that does certain things that they deem important in the, des the design and sound of their product, that they think that translates to better sound and is therefore better. Now, it's certainly an approach, and I'm not saying it can't be done that way, but I'm more likely to trust or feel simpatico with a designer who designs, measures, listens, see how the listening and the measurements correlate to each other, then refines the design further, measure it, of course measure it. I think the engineers who are designers definitely should measure things. Uh, measure, listen, think, uh, where am I going? Is this what I want it to be? Or I want, uh, I want it to be a little more, I want that violin to sound a little more wood there. I want more sound is what they sh they're, they're searching after. They need to have the technical chops to design something well. There's no doubt about that. But they also have to have the ear to know what it is they're chasing. I, 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 I'm not saying, like I say, I, it's not saying they can't design something great by, without listening to it, but I would be more likely to s feel good. <laughs> about someone who knows what good sound sounds like. And I can tell sometimes when I sit with them at shows or in my, I come to my house, I get a sense of, of the guys who are really good at understanding what something sounds like. A lot of them, to be honest, have crap taste in music and they just play the same lousiest, lamest stuff. But they might just be doing that because it's something they know really well and it serves as a good, a good standard and that's certainly viable. But the guys who are really passionate about music and know good sound when they hear it and can engineer, that's the jackpot. When that happens, good things follow. So um, it's interesting. I just find it really interesting, but I think understand the sound is so ephemeral. You know, if you're designing video, <laughs> you can put it on pause, look at an image, you can critique it, you can compare it against something else. It's literally graphic, but sound is alive. Sound moves, it doesn't stand still. So critiquing it, A comparison to B comparisons are uh, harder to nail down. It's more ephemeral, it's, it's a thing that you just know it when you hear it. And um, the engineers that, that know that have a leg up. My opinion, of course, I'd love to hear your opinions. Please leave them in the comments section below this video. Um, please share these videos if you like them. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. So it comes up daily. Come, in, come back tomorrow, watch another one. Share it with your friends, like it, etc., etc. Bye.